handed. Here come the Panthers through a sign that says it takes more than a year to make a tradition. Today in Amarillo, Permian, the payback number two for the second week in a row. Last week versus Temple, this week the Amarillo High Golden Sandies. Barry Sykes with Rick Wood at Keith Raglan. And uh, Rick, your keys to the ball game this afternoon for Permian if they expect to win this ball game. Well, I think Permian has definitely got to forget last week. Don't look past this week. Uh, they have to really, really uh, be focused today against this Amarillo team. I think that's not only did the weather bother them the last time, of course, uh, that they came up against this Amarillo team, but uh, I think they slipped up on them. You can't overlook this team. Uh, they still have a chance to beat anybody. And uh, Permian, as the coaches say, are focused and are ready to play today. Well, the Panthers coming off the big 35-7 victory against Temple. In the ratings, that moved them to the top of the heap with Dallas Carter. Amarillo coming off a very disappointing 27-20 loss to uh, Class 4A Pampa. And uh, we'll see what happens this afternoon. A matchup of two coaches, Tam Hollingshead, who is in his fourth year with Permian, 36-4-1 his record, and Larry Dipple now in his 19th season with a record of 129-70-3. This series between Permian and Amarillo, the Panthers lead it 16-2. Back to receive the kick will be Brandon Blunt, number three, along with number 33, Keith Lutman. And Eric Stevenson will be teeing it up for Permian. Panthers won the toss to climb to the second half, so we'll defend the goal to the south end as we start this half. You know, Barry, we got some, uh, as, as you were giving some uh, temperatures, uh, 76 degrees and the wind southwest. Yeah, they say nine, southwest at nine, but did, uh, they just blew the ball off the tee, so uh, that may be a little stronger. And here they go. And the Permian uh, kick return team down quick, quickly to uh, put the stops. And there was the kick returner. That was T.J. Jones, the starting tailback. And there was Ryan Williams for Permian to make that stop as he goes running off the field, very proud to make that stop because it looked like he had a little bit of steam going when he came out of that end zone. Barry. Now the quarterback for Amarillo, one of the best in state, according to his coach Larry Dipple, Brett Leathers. Through for 11.39 last year and 11 TDs already. Four touchdowns early in 1993. Leathers will be looking to pass and has completed his first opportunity of the day. This to the uh, split in Robbie Harrison coming across the middle of the field. Well, that was a 38 yard line. That was a very good pass because he threaded the needle. There were three defenders that. Uh, he had to throw between and hit right on the button, so that's something to look for today. The gain was 20 for the Amarillo offense as they have a new set of downs beginning at the 38-yard line. And Jason Harris gets the call for the carry. Harris starting in the backfield today. T.J. Jones, the starting tailback, banged up a little bit with a bad ankle. This gain out to the 48-yard line the game was nine, and it'll set up a second and one for Amarillo. The quarterback Leathers, and uh, slipping in the backfield. And uh, because of the slip, unable to get close to the line of scrimmage for a first is the tailback, rather the fullback, Chad Reagan. Reagan, Amarillo's leading ball carrier on the year. But Jensen was the first one to make contact with him in the backfield. There was some stumbling to start with, to start with by Reagan uh, for the Sandys. But Jensen was there to finally bring him down. There's some movement. Uh, Amarillo's uh, being able to move that defensive front for the permit right now. It'll be 31. Reagan, the winning ball carrier, 143 yards rushing in the first two games combined, putting a 100-yard effort the first week. And it looks as if Harris will have enough for the first. The officials to, uh, will move up quickly to make sure. And they say yes, first down Amarillo. Ball placed squarely at midfield. We're early in the ball game. Early in the first quarter, Amarillo's taken the opening kickoff. And have moved out to midfield with a first and 10. A 
Weathers in the passing department this year, 19 of 39 for 277 yards, and as we told you, already four touchdowns this year. He has Harrison, and Harrison will be inside the Permian, 35 all the way down to the 34-yard line for a gain of 16. Well, what's happening right now, Barry, is uh, they're doing across-the-middle passes, and what they're doing is we're not able, as far as, I mean, Permian is not able to keep up with that across-the-middle, and uh, it took Keltron at that time to catch up with him because his original defender coming on from the other side, number 86, Washington, I mean, uh, yeah, Washington, wasn't able to keep up with him. Well, the Panther defensive backfield very good the first two weeks, allowing 62 and 58 yards in passing the first couple of weeks, but they have not faced a quarterback the quality of Brett Leathers, and uh, he is expected to pass and pass and pass throughout the ball game this afternoon. The game is won to the 31-yard line, maybe won. They begin this uh, particular series from the 32. Garrett led the attack for the front uh, four of the Panthers uh, as they tried to go right up the middle on that one, uh, and as you said, maybe got half yard on it. It'll be second and uh, nine after the gain of one. This again is the tailback Harris, and Harris comes up behind his blockers, and using some deceptive speed and some good blocking, moves out to inside the Permian 25, and Amarillo close to another first down about a half a yard short. Warden's the man that came up to make that one and stopped him just short because uh, the, the runner that time was just really working his way and following his blocks real well, and that's what they're doing. When you look out there, you're seeing a lot of Panthers on the ground, and you're not used to seeing that. Well, they say that Amarillo may have been looking ahead a little bit last week. Half of the 4A school snuck up on him, won the ball game 27 to 20. Trying the middle of the line, and he may be close. This is four down territory, we believe. It should be this early in the ball game with Amarillo wanting to jump on early. Again, Harris on the carry, and they say he is short, uh, where they have the six marks short by a yard, but it's not even quite that. Maybe a half a yard? Yeah, that's about what it is, Barry. Rory Couch pushed him back when he came in on the stack up and uh, kept him from just going over. And this oh. is a big fourth down. Jared Greaser, one of the best kickers in state, they're leaving him on the sideline, and Amarillo has the first. Hamilton saves what could have been an Amarillo touchdown as he's able to grab an ankle on Chad Reagan, the fullback, but not before Reagan has rumbled all the way down to the Amarillo, all the way down to the Permian 12-yard line. That was a one-handed tackle. That's exactly what that was. That was number 40 in there, and Adam Hamilton had a one-handed tackle to make the stop because he was going, and uh, Hamilton just had to die for it. This drive consuming already more than four minutes since the opening drive of the game, and Amarillo methodically moving down the field as Leathers looking to pass. And uh, the pass reception to Reagan coming out of the backfield. This is the same type of offense that Permian uses, the wing tee with just a few extra wrinkles thrown in. Brett Leathers will use his uh, offensive backs as pass receivers more than the Permian offense will use their offensive backs as pass receivers. Reagan able to come up with that one, and Amarillo now with a second down and a two from the Permian four-yard line. Uh, last week, Temple able to score against the Permian defense late in the game. Matter of fact, first, uh, first uh, drive of the third quarter, uh, the first week only gave up three to Coronado. Again, this is Harris as he dives in behind that huge offensive line. Alan Garrett was there, and a host of the other tacklers there. It was enough to pick up the first down, so they've got first and goal. And uh, the way they're opening those holes right now, uh, Permian really has got to get tough. It seems like they're just kind of uh, coasting or, or having a little trouble getting used to the to the offense or the blocking system that's going on right now. It may take them this set of downs to get used to it. That was first and goal officially just outside the Permian one-yard line as the defense digs in tough. Red Leathers, 6'3", 190-pound senior, hands off to Reagan. Reagan dives in, but uh, if we can look and see who's on the bottom of the pile for Permian, a defensive tackle comes up quickly. Uh, Montgomery from his safety spot along with Garrett from the linebacking spot right. to make the tackle. Garrett was the one that submarined him and, and knocked his feet out from under him, and that, kept, that stopped the motor running, and he was able, then the rest came in to, to stop him from carrying, with, carrying on over into the goal. Well, you have this wing and T hammer. 
Down inside the five-yard line with Amarillo Softlings now facing a second and goal from the one. And it's the fake by Letters. He wants it all himself, and he has the Amarillo touchdown. Big hole there. They use a multi-fake uh, handoff, the option on that one, knowing that uh, uh, it looked like that Letters was going to keep it all the way, and he did. He just sliced right off his end. Uh, it came back in to go across to the score. Now the extra point right. Jarrett Bruiser on to try the extra point. And with five minutes and 42 seconds to play in the first quarter, and as Amarillo taking, taking the opening kickoff and driving the length of the field, O'Permian to lead the Panthers 7 0. monster drive by Amarillo to open this ball game this afternoon on a very windy and warm day up in the Panhandle. They told us 76 degrees with a wind southwest at 9, but uh, it seems warmer and windier than that. Amarillo moving against the wind and uh, drives the 82 yards and 13 plays, Rick consuming six minutes, and uh, a good mixture of the run and throw from Leathers and his running backs. In fact, on that first drive, Leathers three of three for 46 yards and then ran for the rest of the yardage with Leathers getting the final one yard himself on the fake into the line and just simply hooked it around the left corner for the Permian rhythm for the Amarillo score. Well, Leathers is definitely a very talented young man because he, he operates the option very well, the fake, he hides the ball well, and of course we've seen already he passes well. But he's also got, it seems like so far, at least in that very first drive, uh, his line, his offensive line, was able to really open some pretty good holes uh, against that Panther defense. Now this line, 253 from the left tackle, 237 the right tackle, in between 202, 206, 241. So they're a huge line that averages well over 220 pounds per man. And to return the kick for Permian, here is Bass. Bass cuts up across the 20, across the 30. And Sheldon Bass is out near the Permian 40-yard line to the 39, as Permian will have their first offensive opportunity of the afternoon. Well, Bass did a great job then of picking his way through that uh, kickoff uh, team because he was really, there were some nice blocks given down there where uh, his, his team were moving the guys away from him. And, uh, of course, he saw his break and he busted through, but he got caught from behind and got a little too close to that sideline. Well, this uh, Permian offense, led by John Williams, 200 yards rushing last week, and the Amarillo defense gave up 180 to Matt Garvin of Pampa. So, uh, judging by that, they can be run on, and you know that John Williams will be hammered time and time again this afternoon. Williams, with the first carry of the game, crosses the 40-yard line up to the 41 for a gain of two. John Williams nearing that all-time Permian rushing mark held by Sean Crow going into the game today needs 211 to tie 212 to break it first he'll have to pass Chris Comer who was just a, a, a bit behind the Crow and uh, if not the 211 today we expect to see him break that all-time mark next week against Odessa High officially the gate is won it'll be second and nine and uh, Nick Keaton oh ho oh, oh. There's something you don't often see, a pass that uh, is intended and hits Sheldon Bass in the hands of Paul's incomplete. That was definitely there. Uh, and Sheldon uh, showed that as he rolled on the ground. I kind of discussed it with himself. That was a nice, nice timing pass that uh, Nick conducted then because he had Sheldon going down. Sheldon broke away from his defenders. I mean, if he'd have caught that, bye-bye. Bye-bye, Murray. It would have been 7-7. Nick Keaton had the most prolific day in Permian schoolboy history last week. 12 of 13 for a percentage of 92.3%. The best ever in Permian history. Alton Holloway had a 90% day back in 1984, but Nick Keaton, 12 of 13 last week versus Temple, already 0 for 1 today. And uh, Permian, in their first offensive set, pursued and pursued well by the Amarillo defense as Permian will have to pump the ball away after Sheldon Bass set the offense up in great field position at the 39-yard line. Permian only able to gain one yard in three tries and 
coming on to punt Joey Lenny for the first punt of the day for the Mojo. Well, they need to, uh, they really needed uh, to a little more yardage than that to at least settle uh, them down and, and say, hey, we are here to play, Amarillo. Just didn't happen. Well, as, as coaches always talk about, you have the long uh, trip. Had the long six-hour trip coming up here. The Panthers uh, made the trip yesterday. Spent the night in Amarillo. And uh, had a leisurely morning before coming out to the ballpark for this 1 o'clock kickoff. Rory Couch and that was uh, Eric Hedla were down on that coverage for the Permian uh, Panthers to make the stop and keep the uh, Sandys at about the 20, their own 26-yard line, I guess we'll call that, and that's where they'll start this drive from, Barry. Well, the punt was 38 yards from Lenny. Leathers hardly touched at all by the Permian defense the last series. Amarillo leads this one early 7-0. And uh, Leathers back to pass, 3-for-3 three three the last drive, and he has a man open but uh, overthrows him. That's the wingback, number 7, Jesco. Pursued by, among others, Tito Brito, number 19, and then that quickly also the linebacker, number 38, Patrick Cooney. All the way across, but he was trailing in some. I mean, the, the pass was open for, for uh, Leathers to complete it. Uh, he just led his man a little bit. It could have been the win, too. Well, one of the goals, I'm sure, for the Panther defense today was to put the pressure on Leathers. Last year up in Amarillo, rather up in Lubbock in the playoff game, he was hardly touched, and that's something the Panther defense will certainly want to make a change today. Here is the pitch back to Reagan. Reagan has about four, maybe five. They're going to mark him uh, just apparently right at the 30-yard line. Beautiful play by Adam Hamilton. I mean, he was blocked all the way, but he strung the play out all the way to the sideline, nowhere for the runner to go. And Hamilton finally, even with a blocker on him, made the tackle and out of bounds. Yeah, we are in a very weird position here at Dick Bivens Stadium, <laughs> sitting right behind the... The Amarillo faithful, and not only can we barely see what's happening, our monitor is almost useless because of the sunshine. And it's a beautiful day, except it's uh, kind of difficult from the position we're sitting in. And again, the pass intended for Harrison, number 82, the leading receiver for Amarillo. Coming into the ball game, that combination's been pretty good to Amarillo, as Robbie Harrison had caught uh, six passes for 121 yards and two TDs. Also had five catches for 101 yards in both of those scores last week against Pampa. Now this time the Permian defense does the job and now Leathers back to kick, kicking into that very stiff wind. Bass will have it and uh, crosses the 40-yard line. He is up to the 45 and a good tackle there for Amarillo by number 40. Jeremy Heath after a punt of 32 yards into that very stiff breeze. Yeah, but there's a flag. We had a clip back at near the 40. Uh, one of the Panther defenders tried to let the man get by, but he let him get by a little too much on him before he finally hit him and uh, caught him a little bit behind, so that'll come back, I'm sure, for an illegal block. Yeah, that's a no-no. As Permian uh, had great field position up near the 45 to mark off the 15, and uh, they will start this drive. Uh, back uh, somewhere near the 31, 32 yard line officially. And we don't like that football. Let's try this from the 31 <laughs> yard line for Furby. Yeah. The offense for the Panthers, let's set it right quick. Burmis and Couch at the tackles, we believe. We'll check the Burmis in a moment, make sure he is in the ball again. He is number 75. Also, Kane and Jensen, the, the uh, guards, Eddie Chance at center. Alan Garrett and Waters will be alternating at the tight end position. Sheldon Bass, number 18. Be hearing that name an awful lot today. Montgomery at uh, the wingback. Williams, number 36, the main man at fullback. Pink staff, the tailback, and the quarterback is a Nick Keaton. Here is John Williams as Williams tries the corner. The pursuit is there, and his uh, gain is maybe one. Williams has two carries on the day for two yards, but apparently there is a flag on the field, and this one may be coming back. Well, number 22, Clay Adderholt, was there to make the final stop. There's going to be a holding call against the Panthers again, but what happened there was uh, Williams tried to make the turn. He had his split man out blocking uh, the defense out, but it started uh, uh, closing in on him, so he decided to go around and outside, and when he did that, of course, uh, he had nowhere to go, and uh, was lucky to gain what he did gain. But that's all going to change, and for naught anyway. Well, the Panthers have been very uh, fortunate in the uh, penalty area the last couple of weeks. Yet they have not been shooting themselves in the foot. But uh, we have a couple of shots to the uh, 
to the foot on two consecutive plays, and now Permian, after the markoff, will have again a first opportunity. It'll be first and 19 from their own 22-yard line. Nick Keaton, the senior, under center. 176-pound senior, Williams in the backfield, along with Pinkstead. Keaton looking quick for Van, and uh, falls incomplete. Tell you who is really keyed up for this game, Barry, as you can see out on the field right now, are these Sandys. I mean, them scoring first, having a great first drive, is uh, the medicine they needed. Uh, they're all over the defenders. Uh, number 21 right there for uh, Amarillo, uh, Craig Tipping, was right on Bass as Bass would attempted to make that catch. And uh, even if Bass would have made it, uh, he would have gone nowhere. Permian now second and 19 from the 22-yard line. Keaton again looking to throw. Looks for Bass. Bass is covered. And uh, well, he looks too Bass. He looks first for uh, number 15, J.C. Kidd, and wide left. Kidd covered, looked back for Bass, and Bass was able to uh, get his mitts on it, but wasn't able to hang on. Permian 0 for 4 in the passing department, just a little bit ragged after a very crisp performance last week. Well, uh, I think partial. Part of that has been uh, that last pass there to Bass was a tough, pa a tough catch to make, but it was in his hands, and we haven't seen Bass miss a whole lot when they get near his hand. But I think that's a little surprising. Now the Birmingham offense clicking at all cylinders last week, just a little ragged here in the early going. Michael Williamson putting the pressure on Keaton, and uh, Keaton again just a little tall as Bass was the intended receiver. And again, the pass bouncing off the hands, again a high throw, and uh, was not able to be complete. Pressure by the Sandys defense is causing Keaton to really roll out. He can't stay in that pocket like we've seen him do before and uh, have a little bit of time to try and uh, level in on that pass and be a little more accurate. So Keaton's having to roll out, he's having to try and throw on a run, he's trying to watch his receivers and see where they are. Uh, and the Sandys are really uh, making a tough game of it for Permian. Yeah, Sheldon Bass, 11 catches, 174 yards, and three scores coming into play this afternoon. Lenny back to punt. It's high, but it's also very short. Bounces at the Amarillo 40 and will take a Permian bounce and stop about the 34-yard line. Three minutes and 19 seconds to play in the uh, opening period here from Dick Benton Stadium. The punt of 40 officially by Lenny and the Amarillo faithful. You can hear them as they cheer their defense as they come walking and very cockily and confidently off the field after stopping Permian on two consecutive drives. Well, rightfully so. Nobody's been able to do that, you know, and uh, yet this season. So Sandy's have a right to be uh, excited about themselves. Uh, they've taken on this uh, highly uh, touted uh, team, and they, they feel really confident about it. Yeah, the key to the game for Permian, you have to you have to make the run work with Williams to set up the pass, and right now they're able to stop the run on first down and uh, forcing the Panthers into passing when Amarillo's defense wants him to. Patrick Cooney, beautiful play there. As he made penetration into the Sandys backfield, was sitting there waiting for the handoff to be made and made the tackle, which will throw him for a loss of about a yard, yard and a half. Sandys starting deeper back uh, than, uh, than they wanted to, I'm sure. Well, officially, they say a loss of one, and as it's marked at the 33, where we're sitting here in the stands, it's kind of hard to get the angle exactly right as to where the ball is placed down, but uh, Harris losing a yard. Once again, the pressure almost not existed. Here it comes late, and uh, who made the first hit? Was it Cooney? Number 88, Mr. Waters. Mr. Waters in there quickly, number 88. And uh, Greg Pinkstaff was in there also. I mean, they had him blocked in. He had nowhere to go. <laughs> He looked downfield, Leathers did, saw everybody was covered, so he decided, I've got to go, but they already had him in and, and blocked in, he couldn't go. The defense for Permian Waters, and for the Panthers, uh, the injury last week to um, Rene Garcia, the injury that will put Garcia out for the year, gives Waters the starting nod this afternoon. Here's the pass intended for Harrison, and intercepted, intercepted by, by Bass. Big play by big play. He caught he caught by that. He caught he caught the pass from Leathers with a great catch. <laughs> you know, and now he may be warmed up. You know what I'm saying? That was a pretty interception. I mean, Bass went up in front of the, the, the re intended receiver and pulled it out of the air and made a beautiful catch right inside the sideline. So Permian has the best field position. 
uh, in Sandy's territory. Well, the 11th interception of the uh, of the high school career for Sheldon Bass, the fourth this year, following the seven he had last season. Williams in the rushing department this afternoon, two carries, two yards, as he has been unable to get on track and get across the scrimmage line and uh, into the defensive backfield of Amarillo as they've been able to key on him. Here he goes again. John Williams has the corner, and he tries. Uh, it's a motto a motto as he pushes yeah. number 12, Chris, Chris Bookman. Bookman, the uh, returning senior safety, and uh, the gain is 15. Well, we have to know officially a gain of 10 as he gained yeah. exactly 10. Yeah, there they're moving it. Down to the 39-yard line, and for Williams, finally getting on track. And uh, the first, the initial first down for Permian. That first down play is so important, Rick, yeah. because it completely sets up everything else you do offensively. You no have doubt. to do something on first down to make your offense work. And up until that play, the Amarillo defense has been dictating the plays that uh, Permian would have to call on second and third down. Here again is John Williams. The 194-pound senior dives uh, inside the 35 to the 34. It's a gain of close to five. Well, Brett Bear was in there to grab him around the ankles as he went by. And again, because of the power of Williams, you know, he gained uh, at least, what, four or five yards just by sliding by. But what you've seen now in this set of downs is we've seen now Williams going up the middle. Had a pretty good size hole at that time and the first play of the of the set he went around the ends and he had a lot of running room out there so maybe things are just starting to turn a little bit now yeah, the clock ticking inside of 120 to play in the first quarter amarello has the early lead seven nothing after an 82 yard opening drive here is williams as he cuts back in across the grain and uh, williams will be about uh, maybe a half a yard short the gain is uh, officially five yards and Permian now facing a third and one Chris Bookman came up to make the stop and hit him head on. Williams had to look. If he'd have gone outside with his blockers in the direction the play was going to take, he'd have been shut down a lot quicker. So he cut inside his blockers and saw a slight opening. Not much, I guarantee. But Sandy's closed it real quick and shut him down before he could get that needed first down. John Williams, 23 carries, 148 the first week. Last week, 30 for 200 against a very highly talented Temple defense. He should have enough for the first. The forward progress should have given John Williams enough yardage for the Permian first. And the, official, real close. the official's holding up the closed fist that says fourth down. Though. I think they're going to take a look at it and measure, but Williams, hit the, he, Williams came up to the line that time and uh, saw it stacked, and he hesitated just long enough. It doesn't take much for as quick as the Sandys are reacting today. And they, had a, they grabbed a hold of him and uh, held him so he couldn't go any further. But that slight hes hesitation of trying to decide whether do I slide to the right, do I slide to the left off of this, uh, may have stacked him up short of that. Very you know, the Permian offense is facing a defense they don't see very often throughout the year, and that is a 5-0 defense with five down linemen in the middle nose tackle in that five-man down line is Michael Williamson, a 253-pound senior. They say he did get enough for the yep. first, and so John Williams and the Permian offense will have a new set to work with from the 29-yard line of Amarillo. Well, I was made that by about half the length of the ball, if that much. Well, uh, it was a good spot for Permian. The interior of the defense for Amarillo, 253 for Williams Williamson at the nose tackle flanked by a 222 and a 232 pound defensive tackle. That's a lot of beef up front. Here is Williams. Williams hesitates and that hesitation may get him down the field as Williamson peels back to help make the tackle. But the gain is nine for Williams and Permian will have a second and one. I guess I just talked about that hesitation because the last play he hesitated, he got caught by it. This time he hesitated and it was beautiful because it worked and he picked up good yardage. We have come to the end of the first quarter, and it's Amarillo, surprisingly, on top of Permian, 7-0. John Williams, in his career, averaging 118 yards a game this year, 6.6 .6 per carry, but uh, this afternoon, slow going as Amarillo has put the clamps on him so far, 7 carries for 30 yards, unofficially, here in the first quarter of play, and Permian with an opportunity as they're knocking on the door down to the Amarillo 21 yard line. Well, last play of the first quarter was a very nice eight yard pickup again, as I say, by Williams. And uh, that's what Permian's looking for to break this loose. Well, if you get eight, down, eight yards on first down, you can pretty well, as we said a moment ago, dictate what you want to do on second and third down. And with a pass play combination of the uh, 
passes to Bass and Keltron Montgomery. There's a whole lot more you can do. This uh, time, Permian elects to again run John Williams. And Williams will have it up for the first. As uh, seems like another day at the office on that particular carry down to the 14-yard line. And for Permian, a gain of seven. And a first and ten for the Panthers. Jeff Robinson came up for the Sandys to make the stop on Williams. Williams runs a, a very low to the ground and on purpose stays low to the ground. He's a very difficult target to get a hold of many times. Permian averaging about 202 yards on the on the ground a game and uh, Amarillo defense averaging giving up about 193. Here's the pass to Bass and Bass to the one. And they say there's going to be a flag, Barry. They were they, offside. They being Sandys, I'm sorry. So you, have a, so you have a free play for Permian. Yeah. Taking the free play, he elects to go deep to the corner or deep to the center of the field to Bass, and Bass makes the initial catch of the day uh, from his own quarterback. Caught one from uh, Leathers a moment ago. Well, let's check and see what the flag's about. What about the flag? Well, they're discussing it now. The other referees that saw who got the ball signal it was the Sandys, but that flag was offside. There's no All doubt right, about let's it. Let's check and see what the flag is. We'll, Coming uh, back. Here comes the defense back on the field. Holding on the defense. Oh. And I said offside. Well, it? it is on the defense, though, so no matter what happened as far as the fumble recovery, Permian will retain possession of the ball. And get a penalty. If you mark it from the line of scrimmage. All right, we're going to mark it from the line of scrimmage, so the pass play is negated. Well, what definitely Half the distance of the goal is where it officially is, so they will mark it down yeah. to the nine-yard line. There's the call. Offside, he gives this time, so that's what I saw with the okay. five-yard penalty. And, but he did give holding before, so. Well, it's uh, still preseason for the officiating crew down to the nine-yard line. That was a nice catch by Bass, so he had to hold off. Oh. But he, had, he, he just kind of juggled it just enough, and the Sandys closed around him, of course, and then tore it loose. Now, because, you know, in his effort to get to the end zone, he attracted a whole lot of black jerseys toward him, and uh, the ball came loose. But Permian now with a penalty uh, in their favor. It's going to be first and goal. They uh, are in the nine-yard line. John Williams trying the corner. And uh, a mano a mano, Williams versus number 93. Dusty Holland wins that particular battle, a gain of absolutely zip. Permian now with a second down, and uh, you know, second and four now from the nine-yard line. Well, Jeff Robinson was in there to help on that tackle, and what they did was just string Williams out. That's that's what he did. He kept looking, can I cut back? When can I cut in? When can I cut in? And all he kept seeing was black dirt. Yeah, that was an awful Williams last year. This year, he's done a much better job of cutting up the field and not using that sideline so much. Williams, Again, heading toward the sideline as he uh, pushes down inside the five and uh, will possibly, well, it's going to be close to a first. He had to reach about the four-yard line for a first and goal. They got it. First they down. Say first down. The gain of five. And Permian now with first and goal from the Amarillo four-yard line. Ten minutes and 43 seconds to play from Amarillo and Dick Bibbins Stadium on a beautiful fall afternoon here in the Panhandle. And uh, we were informed that the uh, the Tri-City uh, Fair would be going on this weekend. That's next weekend, so the big crowd we expected uh, around the stadium did not materialize. You mean lack of parking, Blake? That's right. But uh, so far, so good. We were able to get in. Here is Williams. He's fine. And Williams down to the one-yard line. He tried to get in. Uh, he hit about the one-yard line, and then he tried to crawl on in. Said, well, maybe the referee won't see that one. But, of course, the referee right there on top of him, so... It didn't work. Now the ninth play in the drive that began with a minute 57 to play in the first quarter. Now ticking inside of 10-20 uh, and counting. Terming in second and goal from the one. John Williams, 200 yards and four touchdowns last week against Temple. And he, uh, he has the per first touchdown right in the afternoon. That is a Permian touchdown. And the Panthers pull within one at 7-6. Williams does that so well. What he did is come up to the line. He was hit immediately. I mean, uh, he th theoretically should have been stopped. But what he does is turn his back to the play and then starts backing in. And that's what he did. He slid off to the side as he backed in and got that touchdown. And now we'll try to extra point, see if this can be tied up.
Looks good. It is good. Eric Stevenson's kick is true. And with 10 minutes and 7 seconds to play in the second quarter, it is now Permian 7 and the Emerald Sa uh, Sandys 7. Rick, here is an interesting statistic. Permian's offense, 46 yards on the afternoon. And John Williams has all 46 yards of offense, all of it rushing as Permian's, uh, Permian's offense has yet to complete a pass this afternoon. But the most important fact of the game is the score is tied now at Permian 7, Amarillo 7. The uh, drive by Permian, 9 plays and 49 yards, took them 3 minutes and 50 seconds. And uh, John Williams, the final yard in the Permian score with Stevenson's kick to tie the score up at 7. Well, I think what's going to be very, very imperative for uh, the Panthers in this set of downs against the Sandys is to be sure that either Leathers has a lot of pressure put upon him where he has to rush those passes or that their receivers, intentional, re I mean, uh, intended receivers are covered. Now the kick will be uh, gathered in by Blunt inside the five yard line. He will move up to the Birmingham 20 and uh, he has a lot of room. Brandon Blunt all the way out to the Amarillo 48-yard line. That is one area that Permian was the weakest last week against Temple. That's an area of the game that you don't practice usually but one time a week. You know, you, ran, you run through it in, in kind of 50% uh, fashion. You can't do it full speed because you might get somebody hurt. Well, and so you come to game day, and, and, and sometimes it's a little weaker than you like. Well, they better be glad that C.C. Harris practiced his because he was the last man with a shot and made the stop. So... Here come the Sandys. Yeah, one thing you don't want to do is let an offense, the quality of Amarillo with Brett Leathers, play with a shortened field the entire game, and Leathers now will drop back to pass. He wants a lot on his first try. The pass intended for Harrison, and it was Harrison and Bass, and the pass uh, not near completion. Well, Brito was there, too, and what, what Leathers saw was his pocket was starting to collapse, and uh, I think he felt just enough pressure. Uh, the pass was, it was a beautiful pass. It just laid him a little bit too much, and Brito and Bass were both there covering. Yeah, the Permian defense, uh, the last series did a much better job of putting the pressure on Brent Leathers, and uh, now we're finding ways to get around that very thick and massive offensive line. Amarillo, second and 10 from their own 49. Jason Harris on the carry, but there is a flag on the field. You can see the yellow flag fluttering at the Permian 49-yard line. Let's check the flag. They say holding offense, and that's going to come back. A very impressive run by Harris is he was able to take the delay and cut back against the grain for big yards. I think one of the big things that's working right now, especially for the Sandys, is Leather's uh, heart of deception because he turns his back to the line of scrimmage, holds the ball in the middle, and he has two backs crossing in front of him. Either one of them can take the handoff, and I think he's been very successful at that, and that was evident on that play because they weren't sure which direction he was going and the direction it went. They weren't quite ready. There was a pretty nice hole there for the Sandys to go through. Well, after the mark-off, the mark-off will be back to the Amarillo 41-yard line, and uh, that'll make it second. And 18 now for Brett Leathers, Chad Reagan, number 30, and they're going to be going from the shotgun. Here is the snap back to Leathers, looking quickly. He finds a man, and the man falls down. Here is Tito Shelton Bass. Tito Brito. Tito Brito with the interception, and Brito brings back his first pick of the year down deep inside Amarillo territory to the 35-yard line. The intended receiver stumbled and fell. Leathers had the pass there for him to break across the middle. As he turned to make the break, his feet came out from under him, and there was Tito. Tito caught the ball, of course, and brings a nice return back, as you said, to about the 36-and-a-half-yard line. Now, the second time that Leathers has been picked off this afternoon up in Lubbock last year in the playoff game, Permian took back three against him, but uh, Amarillo still prevailed in that ball game. Permian now with great field position as they will set up just outside the Amarillo 36-yard line. Massive humanity that uh, John Williams runs into inside the 35. The gain is maybe, it's going to be close to three, a long three, close to four yards officially. And number 78 comes piling up. Courtney Gardner, number 78, junior, 222-pounder. 
five two defense. You have five down linemen. You have two linebackers. The uh, defensive secondary led by Chris Bookman, number 12. The weakest link in the, in the bunch is Craig Tipping, Craig Tipping, number 21. And it is Tipping who is now matched up against, uh, let's check it out, uh, four on the left side. He is matched up against Montgomery. Let's see if uh, Permian runs in that direction. Williams able to bounce outside, and his speed will take him all the way down oh. inside the oh. end five to the four-yard line. What a run. I mean, he picked his way. In fact, he had a two tacklers on him at two different times as he tried to slide outside. One of them, he knocked his arm off of him when he had a, tried to arm tackle him. No way that worked. And then uh, shook the other one as he rounded the corner all the way to the five-yard line. And Panthers set up, of course, in fantastic field position, first and goal. And the gain is 29, officially. 29 for John Williams, who will have 79 yards rushing now here in the first half. But more importantly, Permian to the four-yard line, and John Williams is about a yard short. Well, let's, yeah, okay. He did hit his knee hit before he rolled over. There's no doubt about that. Williams, again, very adept. And if you watch that play and see that play, you will see Williams hesitating again. And he is an artist at that by hesitating, seeing which way the people are moving, where's his best hole to hit and uh, was very successful there, getting them within one yard of the goal. Uh, Williams has all of Permian's offense this afternoon, 0-5 in the passing department. Williams, 82 yards. Permian now second and goal from the one-yard line. Here is John Williams, and he will have touchdown. the Permian touchdown. Touchdown. Williams goes off his left side following uh, that left side of that line, and uh, they, were, they stacked up the Sandys, moved them back just enough for Williams to go over the top and in. 36 yards following the Tito Brito interception that set Permian up with great field position. At the Amarillo 36, took him only four plays. The big one, a 29-yard run by John Williams down the left side. And now uh, Eric Stevenson, who is perfect on the year at five for five, or they're seven for seven uh, coming into the game. Now makes it nine for nine after two point afters today in Permian. With 7.37 to play in the second quarter, now has jumped out to a 14-7 lead over Amarillo. Amarillo with 36 yards rushing to go with 46 yards passing this afternoon. Permian, offensive output so far, 83 yards, all of that on the ground and all of that by John Williams. But more importantly, as we said a moment ago, after the interception by Tito Brito, Permian now with a 14 to 7 lead. 7.37 to play before half. This being a non-district game, the Permian band has not made the trip. We have a good crowd of faithful that did make the trip from Odessa, but uh, with the uh, Permian Basin Fair in full swing, a lot of folks I'm sure stayed at home to do their thing out in the Ecker County Coliseum Fairgrounds. Well, it hasn't been the most beautiful execution, executed game, but uh, the important part is what ends up on the scoreboard, correct, Greg? Uh, you want to get a win no matter how, and when you make the long trip, it doesn't matter how you get it. Here is the return again by Blunt, and the Permian uh, kick return team down quickly as they are able to stuff Blunt before he reaches the 20-yard line. They're going to mark it uh, just beyond the 18, and from there, Amarillo will have a new set of downs at first and 10. Mike Nichol, the gentleman uh, for the Panthers that was in for the, to uh, make the stop as they tried that run back. Again, they were looking and watching for the uh, blocking assignments to start taking hold, uh, it just didn't happen. These two, especially Mike Nichols, slipped through the blocking assignments and made the tackle. Now the starting defense in for Permian. Big staff, Jensen at the uh, ends, Waters and Wharton in the interior. Hamilton, Garrett, Cooney, the linebackers. Bass and Washington on the corners. Montgomery and Brito back in the defensive backfield as the safety valves. Here is a uh, handoff inside and a short game. Backed up by Jimmy Wharton in the middle of that line. Wharton was down and blocked, but as they tried to go across the top of him, he was able to reach up and uh, make the stop in the tackle. That's that's really giving that second effort for The gain of three for T.J. Jones, the junior 173-pounder. He's had a tender ankle the last couple of weeks, and uh, he and uh, Jason Harris splitting time now in the offensive backfield along with Chad Reagan, the uh, senior, number 30. It is Reagan now with a carry. And uh, Reagan steps out of bounds after he has it up for the first, up to the Amarillo 30-yard line, and 
Amarillo's offensive line doing a great job, and the offensive backs finding the holes to pick and uh, doing a good job running the ball this afternoon. They really had the blocking out front of them that time. They had the Panthers cut down at the line, at the uh, line backing uh, side, as well as had uh, number 86, Aaron Washington, blocked out, but Aaron still was able to force him out of bounds. Washington, the 170-pound senior, cornerback. Leathers under center, number nine. Jones and Reagan behind him. They try the middle with Reagan. And uh, not much of anything, if anything, is number 30, Bouchon Bergen, up quickly now for Permian to make the tackle. 5'8", 201 pound seat. Jimmy Horton again in there, as uh, also with his shoulder into the running back. Uh, st he's really stuffing up that middle. They're not, they're not able to move him around. He's able to just clog it up, and uh, he got his hands on it. Bouchon Bergen now in spelling Garrett at the middle linebacker post, flanked by uh, Hamilton and Cooney. And Amarillo will try T.J. Jones as Jones trying to cross play play against the grain. And uh, good for a good gain of almost five before uh, Rory Kaus, number 60, able to stick a helmet in there and make the tackle. And Rory was blocked. He had a man on him and shoved his man off once he was able to decide which way the runner was going to go. He was able to move the blocker away from him, but he still had to grab him from behind because they're still very quick hitting those holes. Amarillo with a passing situation in his third and six. Leathers under center, drops back, looks for Harrison. Here comes the pressure, and uh, out quickly, Adam Hamilton to knock the ball harmlessly away. He uh, intended the pass for Brandon Loper, the tight end, but uh, fell harmlessly incomplete. All that was was pressure put on by the Panthers, and that's, that's what uh, the Panthers said they needed to do. They needed to keep the pressure on Leathers, make him rush those passes because he is so talented in that area and uh, make him come up just enough short. And one of the biggest kids on the field is the Amarillo quarterback who's 6'3 and 188 what a pounds. Punch. Nice catch by Bass. Here is Bass back to the 15. The 51-yard punt will be returned back into Amarillo territory as the special teams for Permian, the 50-yard punt officially, the special teams for Permian Again, give the Mojo offense a great opportunity as Sheldon Bass is all the way down to the Amarillo 46-yard line. The Panthers with 523 to work with before half of the 14-7 lead. Ephraim Hamilton and Garrett out front of him blocking as Bass, as Bass was directing them. Okay, take care of this one. Let's move that way. I'm going to go around over here. And out front of him had some excellent blocking to allow him to get where he got. Amarillo with 82 with the opening kick. Uh, after the opening kickoff, 82 yards for a score, and since then they punted one, two, three, four consecutive series. Permian with a 14-7 lead after falling behind early, 7-0. Here is Keaton, and here again is John Williams. Williams down to the 40-yard line for a six-yard carry, six-yard gain. Marquise de Ross, number 17, now in for Permian in the backfield, spelling great pink staff at the tailback position. Well, Michael Wood got into the backfield, penetrated uh, the line, got in and was blocked, but turned around in time to catch uh, uh, Williams going past him, was able to trip him up as he stumbled in and uh, to the line with uh, the gain that he got. Ross. And the assistant of John Williams, 88 yards of rushing as Permian has yet to complete a pass this afternoon. Second and... Uh, Second and five for Permian now at the 41-yard line. A moment ago, Rick, I said that Amarillo, after the opening series, opening score, had uh, punted their four consecutive possessions after that. Two of those were interceptions, one by Tito Brito, one by Bass. But the Permian defense doing a good job. And on the other side, Permian punted the first time, the second time they had it, and then after that, a nine-play 49-yard drive for a score capped by the Williams run, and then a 36-yard a uh, four-play drive, again, a one-yard John Williams run, and that's where Permian has moved ahead on the scoreboard 14-7. to seven. Second and five from the Amarillo 40, the quick pass out to Bass. Bass will have enough for the first, and there is the first pass completion of the afternoon, a gain of seven to Sheldon Bass, who coming into the game had caught 11 from Nick Keaton for 174 yards. That's an average of 15.8 per catch. Well, Craig Tipping, the first time they tried that pass, it was going the other direction, of course, to Bass, and Bass was hit immediately by Craig. Craig was up on him real tight, 
but uh, that time they were giving Bass a lot of room, and that Bass had time to catch it and move ahead, but it was tipping that made the catch. Now there was a flag on the field. You saw the official, the referee, pick it up and wave it off, saying there was no infraction. Sometimes they fall out of the pocket. You just never know, you know. They, that happens. Permian now first and ten from the Amarillo 33-yard line. The inadvertent yeah. <laughs> dropping of the yellow hang. <laughs> At least you can wave that off. The inadvertent whistle you can't wave. You're right. Here is Keaton. Nice pass to J.C. Kidd. And uh, as Rick mentioned, J.C. Kidd on the catch. That was kind of deceptive, Barry, because what they had was Bass and Kidd both out there. And, uh, it, I mean, uh, yeah, had two receivers, intended receivers out there, and uh, the defense couldn't tell who was going to get it. And, and J.C. was kind of hidden, tucked in a little uh, area there that nobody saw him, and it went to him. And uh, very nice carry. It's almost a first down, but uh, not quite. Uh, nine yards on the pickup to J.C. Kidd, his second reception of the year, had one for two yards coming into the game this afternoon, now two for 11. Here is Williams, and Williams will have the first down and once again bangs inside the Amarillo 20, down to the 19-yard line, a gain of five, 350. You know, it's stopped until they move the chance. It's been amazing, the matchup, and, and uh, who's been making most of the tackles on Williams has been Chris, uh, yes, Chris Bookman. And uh, they have been pounding each other out there so far. It, it'll be interesting to see how, how long this thing goes. Yeah, when you continually have to have your tackles made by your safety, something ain't going right for your defense. And for Permian, that, of course, is the goal, is to get John Williams into the defensive backfield as quick as they can. Williams heads to the sideline, and... Uh-oh, uh -oh, there's the flag. It was a face mask. I kept waiting for that. Uh, you could see the face mask grabbed as he went down the sideline. And uh, nice play again by Williams. I mean, he was tackled, he was stopped, but he has that ability with the power that he has as that uh, strong running back to just shake the tackle. Yeah, there's a face mask penalty. Let's see where they marked him out of bounds. Apparently, Williams had stepped out at the three-yard line. The gain of 16 for John Williams will top the 100-yard mark again for the third consecutive week. Unofficially, after the 16-yard carry, 109 on 19 carries. And uh, half the distance to the goal means Permian will have a first and goal from the Amarillo one and one half yard line. It's just like there's a different team out there, Barry, from what you saw earlier in the first period of play. Uh, this team is really making the plays. Nick Keaton, the quarterback, with a full house backfield. Here is Williams, and Williams leaps into the Amarillo end zone for the Permian two yard touchdown, and Permian. 20 to 7 with 316 to play before half and Eric Stevenson drops on the field to add the exclamation point with the extra point. Well that's really the only place Williams had to go was in the air and uh, if he could sprout wings it'd be a lot easier landing but since that's not available to him the dive and roll effect uh, was all that he had for him because it was really stacked up in the middle and uh, he has some terrific jumping power. Here's the extra point attempt. It's good. Stevenson's extra point makes the score Permian 21, Amarillo 7, with 3.16 to play before half from Dick Bibbon Stadium in Amarillo. John Williams unofficially this afternoon, 20 carries, 111 yards, and all three of Permian's touchdown runs. Uh, two keys to the uh, offense this afternoon has been the play of the defense and the interception returns by Tito Brito and Sheldon Bass. Also a big punt return a moment ago by Sheldon Bass that said Amarillo where the Permian up at the Amarillo 46-yard line. So really a good overall effort, offensive, defensive, and special teams today for Permian. It definitely has. And as I said uh, just a minute ago, you wouldn't, you wouldn't have thought it would be this way once you saw the way Permian was uh, playing uh, the very first uh, period of play. They were rather hesitant. They, uh, they looked like uh, they were confused as to what they, how they should react to the offense of the Sandys, and uh, of course the Sandys were really attacking on offense and turning it around on defense, and really were pepped up and pumped up and were really taking care of the Permian offense. Bass is a uh, punt return to the 46. Permian takes it to 46 in six plays in two minutes and seven seconds. And uh, the Panthers, look where they're kicking off from. With a 21 to seven lead. The penalty means Permian uh, kicks this one off from the Amarillo 35 and Blunt does the wise thing, and that is take the knee 
and Amarillo will start this series from their own 20-yard line. 316 to play before the half. The Permian Band, as we told you a moment ago, this being a non-district game, has not made the long trip to Amarillo. District play begins next, next week, Rick. Odessa High and Permian, Midland Lee, Midland High, Abilene, Abilene Cooper, San Angelo with their fourth non-district game next week. And now the wars begin for sure and for fun. And not really for fun, but uh, for seriousness. Crosstown rivals begin, right? Lots of fun Friday night, West Texas football. Here is Reagan. Reagan uh, having a good game this afternoon. The gain of four after the 24-yard line. Uh, eight carries for 29 yards per carry. The average uh, quite a bit less than four. But uh, the statistics don't show how hard he is really running this afternoon, but the Permian defense is now being able to bottle up those running backs just a little more than they were in the early going. Travis Jensen in on that and going for the ball. The ball bobbled for a moment, but uh, he recovered. Here's the tailback, Jason Harris, number 41. Harris will uh, have his uh, helmet buried deep into the Bibbins uh, Stadium turf. <laughs> yeah, with, with the help of Patrick Cooney. Cooney got a hold of him. You know, the starting tailback, Jones, only seven on two carries today. Harris has run a lot more, 24 on seven carries for Amarillo and in the passing department. Leathers was successful early. He was 3-3 three three for 46, and since then he is 0 for the next four passes. This will be a uh, passing situation. Third and four for the Amarillo Sandy offense. Leathers under uh, center and uh, shows what we know about coaching as he takes it uh, to the fullback. Reagan hands it off to Harris, and Harris will have enough for the Amarillo first. Well, I think, uh, yeah, not only were we thinking that, but possibly the Panthers were because uh, they, they did. It was a, a delay hand to the fullback as he went through, but uh, all he needed to pick up was the four or five yards, and that's what their goal, of course, to get that first down. Now the clock is not friendly to Amarillo right now. A minute, 40, a minute rather, 54 seconds to play before the half. Leathers has the tight end. Brandon Loper, and Loper all the way out for the 19-yard game to midfield. Well, Loper was wide open, Barry. I mean, uh, he had found that little bit of a hole there in the middle of the Panther secondary that uh, they were more in a zone uh, defense, it looked like at that point, and he found the niche and was wide open for Leather's uh, toss. Harrison, the leading receiver, Loper coming in four for 41, but 19 on that uh, pass and catch and run. And now Amarillo fighting the clock, a minute 30, a minute 29 and counting. The run by Harris down to the 47-yard line of Permian. Something you have to consider, Jarrett Greaser, number 97 for Amarillo, probably the best kicker in state. A 47-yard field goal earlier this year against Clovis, New Mexico. Last year hit two over 50, and that uh, is only the second time in Amarillo schoolboy history that a, that a kicker has hit a field goal in excess of 50 yards in a season. Amarillo down to the 35-yard line, the 12-yard gain after the pass from quarterback Leathers to Jesco, his wingback. Do we have a flag on the field? Yes, there is a flag. It looks like some go against the Panthers are holding, I believe. It looks like holding. Again, the, the uh, receiver found, again, the little bit of a hole there in that defense. And Leathers, you can't give Leathers that. I mean, you give him a little daylight, and Leathers will put that ball there. And that's what he's showing right now, that he, you know, you can't, don't give him anything, Panthers. Uh, Dimple, as we told you earlier, considers his quarterback to be among the best in state. And uh, Amarillo now in their two-minute offense is showing why his coach has uh, that feeling about his quarterback. Amarillo has called the timeout. They are at the Permian 35 with a minute and four seconds to play before halftime in Permian with a 21-7 to lead. Red Leathers passed for 173 against uh, Pampa last week. In the early going this afternoon, three for three for 46 in the opening Amarillo drive after that misfired on four consecutive. And uh, now has come back with 30 yards and two consecutive completions, five of nine unofficially, 76 yards. And now Amarillo is in great field position for either a touchdown or possibly a field goal opportunity as a greaser and the Amarillo offense will have a very stiff breeze to their back should they elect to go for the field goal. Here is Harris again trying the outside and Permian will put the stops on him after a very short gain of only three. 
Alan Garrett came up to make the stop, and uh, they are going without a huddle, as you can see him moving up as the clock winds down. Amarillo will go from the shotgun. Well, now he moves under center, Brett Leathers. 43 seconds and counting, 42-41. Amarillo will have at least two more shots, possibly three or four at the end zone. Jesco is covered. Leathers will have to carry the ball himself, and number 40, Adam Hamilton. Bumbo. If, well, they may count him down. Hamilton came up quickly to make the tackle after, after the Leathers gain of, uh, really a gain of only maybe one yard, but uh, they say he was down and the ground could not cause the fumble. That's exactly right. I don't understand, but uh, I couldn't see, I mean, I couldn't see from the, where we were uh, as to actually when that fumble happened, but uh, it looked like Leathers definitely felt that he had to go, you know, the go-ahead uh, to make some yardage there as his, uh, his receivers were covered, and... Uh, so he tucked it and win, but he was caught from behind. You know, and I think, believe it was uh, Adam Hamilton that did that. You know, Amarillo needs to reach inside the Permian 25 for the first. The game was officially two, and uh, Amarillo will be facing a third and uh, five from the Permian 30. 19 seconds to play. Amarillo has called the timeout, and uh, now the first test for the Permian defense since that first. Uh, Initial series by the Sandys. The defense has played very solid after that point. That's true. I'm sure the Sandys would like to, of course, get it closer for any attempt they would have if that is what it ends up being, uh, a field goal. Uh, you, you, you know as well as I do what they're after, of course, is the touchdown before they go in at halftime. But uh, as you say, strong win to the back and a very good field goal kicker in place. Either way they go, a good attempt at points. Well, let's say that the pass is awry. That would make the uh, attempt 47 yards and would match his season best. Here is Amarillo and here is Reagan. And Reagan will have enough for the Amarillo first down as he is down inside. The Permian 25, they're gonna mark him just over the 25 yard line. And Amarillo will have a first, but more importantly, 12 seconds to play. Bass and Waters teamed up to make the stop finally on Reagan because that Reagan again, he's kind of built close to the ground also and a very tough person to tackle. Time senior, out again. 161 pound senior at uh, fullback. Amarillo with 12 seconds to play with, probably time for one pass play before you have to try the kick. So, Rick, with that thinking in mind, you got to think end zone. Well, yeah, you're right. Either that or uh, whether you go to the end zone for the pass or you just try and get behind the defenders and uh, just get it as close as you can for sure. But you know they want that touchdown. That's that's what this is all about. Well, no if, you're, around that. if you're a Panther defender, what you just mentioned is right. You need to make sure the guy doesn't get behind you. And uh, Washington, Bass in the corners, Brito and Montgomery back in the uh, safety positions want to keep those uh, those uh, offensive guys in front of them. You know, knock them down short, give up the three opportunity, but don't give up the seven. Twelve seconds to play in the first half. Permian, the 21 to 7 lead over Amarillo. Permian 2 and 0 coming into the game. Amarillo, record of 1 and 1. The District 3 5 a favorite. Permian, the District 4 5 a favorite. And uh, you might just see these two teams play later on in the season once again. Here is Leathers rolling left. Leathers has just go. He is out, out of the end zone. He caught it. Nice catch and pass, though. He caught it, but he was out of bounds. The ball officially incomplete. Seven seconds to play. You've got time for one more throw. If you can make it a quick one. Definitely. But, uh, Jarrett Priester, number 97, will be trotting onto the field for the field goal opportunity. Definitely a nice pass, a nice reception. Just went a little long for uh, what they wanted it to do. It was, it was awful close, but uh, that was a nice play. Well, within the range of Jared Greaser, this will be placed out at the 32-yard line. It'll be a 42-yard attempt. Greaser with the big leg, the Chip Lowmiller type field goal kicker, and the kick is good. So Amarillo, with three seconds to play before halftime, used uh, three minutes and 13 seconds of the 3.16 remaining to pull uh, within 21-10. Permian 21 and Amarillo 10 from Amarillo and Dick Bivens Stadium. 11 plays, 55 yards, 3 minutes and 3 seconds. The 42-year-old Jared Greaser field goal, Permian 21 and the Sandys 10. Squip kick, no doubt, coming up. Just still want to catch it, take the knee, and 
build a half time with a leak. I'm sure that's the case. Uh, just make sure you get your hands on it, don't give it away, and don't make any big mistakes. Be awful careful, and that's what we'll probably be looking for here. Now the big stories today, John Williams, 20 carries, 111 yards. Uh, Brent Leathers in the passing, 5 of 9, 76 yards. And uh, Permian on top, 21-10. Well, that probably would have been good from 52. He had a lot of room left after he kicked that one through the upright. You're definitely right. They're going to make him play, aren't they? He That's kicks right. It out. He kicks it out of the end zone, and Permian will come out to the 20. They'll have one opportunity. And with a Sheldon Banks and a Keltron Montgomery and a John Williams, that may be too much. Well, I don't, I don't think it was designed to do that. You know, but with that young man's leg, he is, he's a very good player out there. I mean. Uh, that would probably be very difficult to control, trying to keep from kicking <laughs> as far as he can. Uh, as you said, I think that field goal could have been from over 50 yards easily. Yeah, it's a warm and windy one here in the Panhandle this afternoon. My ball in the head is stalled as red. I'm afraid I forgot <laughs> to wear a hat. It looked like a lobster till I get home this afternoon. Yeah, uh, you already do, Barry. Oh, well. So Permian and Nick Keaton will take the knee and we'll go to halftime. It is Permian 21 and Amarillo 10. As we begin the second half of play, Permian will run for a sign that says a natural disaster can't beat the master and has a uh, tornado fashioned to the left side of the run-through sign that uh, the wind has given them all kind of heck with trying to hold that thing up. Well, there they go through it now, Barry. They finally busted through, but you're right. It was This wind is really picking up, and it's uh, been strong most of the uh, afternoon. And probably, uh, Barry, as we talked about, a factor uh, in the decision at uh, the flip at half. Now, Permian will have the opening kickoff of the third quarter. We'll move into that stiff breeze, and then uh, we'll have the wind at their back in the fourth quarter, correct? That's right. Uh, unofficially, first half, both teams with 12 first downs. Permian, 127 yards of offense to 152 for the Sandys. Sandys equally uh, good at rushing and passing, 76 rush, 76 pass. Can't get much better than that. 111 rushing for Permian, 16 passing, 2 of 7. Nick Keaton coming off of that Sterling performance last week. A little bit ragged today, but uh, started making connections late in the first half. John Williams, 111 yards rushing, the only ball carrier for Permian this afternoon. At one point, Permian gave uh, the ball to Williams 16 consecutive plays. On the injury front, uh, Philip Elder has been cleared to return to Pat's practice next Monday. He's an offensive lineman. That's good news for Permian. Brian Wilson still out uh, probably another couple of weeks with that knee injury. And as we told you, Rene Garcia injured last week. will have knee surgery soon, and he is unfortunately done for the year. So Permian will have the first opportunity moving into the stiff breeze as we begin the third quarter of play. And as we talk about just about every week, third quarter, first drive of the, each of the uh, third quarter for each team is very important to establish superiority. In the second half, Permian, as we begin the second half, with a 21-10 lead. Jared Greaser's big foot should send this one through the end zone. And uh, Permian will probably begin the series at their own 20-yard line. <laughs> Always gets a rise out of the ground when the guy does well, that. Well, that's, that's an awful big leg, uh, even with the wind behind him. Uh, he showed that already today. And uh, to be able to hit the goal post, you know, that's, uh, that's really siding in on it. That's... That's really good. He's a strong, strong-legged young man. Now the offense will be led by Nick Keaton, number 25, in the backfield with him. Of course, John Williams, number 36. And I believe uh, Pinkstaff, 27, back there at the tailback position. Now we're short one offensive man. Where is he? And Fermi will have to use a timeout early in the third quarter. Uh-oh. Somebody. Somebody going to get talked to. Somebody wasn't ready. Uh, the added man coming on looks is, like... Uh, Williams. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Uh, John, we've got the ball to begin the second half. The offensive uh, uh, players for Permian, let's see if Burmis is back in an offensive lineman position. He and Couch have been playing quite a bit there this afternoon. Let's see if we can find a 75 right quick. And he is Josh Burmis along with Brian Couch at the tackles. Jamie Kane, Travis Jensen, 61 and 56 to the guards. Eddie Chance, the center. Alan Garrett gets the start at uh, the tight end position. Waylon Waters will be in there quite a bit. Sheldon Bass, number 18. Bass only one catch this afternoon uh, for seven yards. 
J.C. Kidd has one for nine. And uh, Montgomery at the wing back. Keaton, Williams, Pinkstaff in the backfield. The uh, defense for Amarillo, Williamson in the center. Nose guard, 253. Gardner and Hall flank him. Wood and Cox are uh, on the ends. Bayer and Robinson at the linebackers, Adderholt, Bookman at safeties, McNamini and Tipping at the uh, quarterback's position. Nice run by Williams through the middle and a nice hole opened up by Couch and Jensen. Uh, they uh, really uh, moved a hole open, but uh, Williams had to hit it real quick because it closed right behind him, and uh, in doing so, they were able to catch up. But not before he gained, it looked like about seven yards. Now, one thing that uh, Sean McAfee with the OA was pointing out at uh, intermission was that uh, Williams seems to be uh, punishing the defensive backs a little more than normal today. He's really seeking out that contact and trying to punish the defense. Williams had the eight-yard gain, and now the pass out to Bass is complete. Good enough for the Permian first down. It'll be up to the 33-yard line. Gain officially at five, and Permian, two plays, 13 yards, and a first down. I don't know if it's designed to be that way or not, Barry, but it seems like uh, after that first period of play, uh, uh, Clay Alderholt, Alderholt and uh, number 12, uh, uh, Chris Brookman, uh, are playing off of Bass a little bit and giving him the room to cross the line before he even catches that pass, where in the first quarter they weren't doing that. Well, of course, if you do that, the Permian offense will take it all day. They'll take a five-yard gain here and there because a five-yard gain can eventually turn into a big, a big one if uh, your receiver can get a crease. John Williams on the carry. Will cross the 35 to the 36, officially about three. Williams carried the ball 20 times in the first half. Carried it 23 the first week, 30 last week, now 22 after that carry. Trevor Hall, the uh, left guard, defensive guard for the Sandys, was the one that caught him as he was going behind. He's a big horse, 232. Williamson, 253. Gardner, 222. The ends of the flanks at 185 and 176. Nick Keaton. The senior, 176-pound quarterback for Permian. And Keaton wants it all. Sheldon Bass and uh, Booker back there a deep along with the quarterback, McNamini, number 23, and uh, no chance to complete it, so you make sure the other guy doesn't have an opportunity either. Well, he kind of got it up. It looked like the nose of that ball was up as it was coming through it. You get it against this wind, you get the nose of that ball up, it's going to float it. And it just it kept moving it out of bounds, uh, even though it was a, a little bit strong to start with. Uh, and it looked like uh, Coach was a little upset with whatever that was as he brought uh, Nick over to the sideline and made sure he understood what he was trying to tell him. Yeah, the wind can really blow in the panhandle. They told us seven miles an hour before the game, but it's got to be at least up to 20. And Permian moving into a stiff breeze here in the early going in the third quarter, the first series of the third quarter. Ten minutes and ten seconds. Here is Williams. Williams will be caught short of a first as uh, he moves it out to the 41-yard line. The gain is five, but uh, Permian will come up three yards short and will have to pump the ball away into this very stiff breeze. Clay Adderhold came over from his left cornerback position and made the stop on uh, Williams, uh, again, they try and really uh, string out that defense so that uh, Williams isn't able to uh, get much running room. Uh, they're gonna have to, he's going to have to run into some Sandy somewhere. Now, Permian had to punt the first two series today. After that, uh, a nine-play, 49-yard drive, a 36-yard uh, four-play drive, a 46-yard six-play drive, and now the beginning of the third quarter, much like the beginning of the game, as they will punt the ball away in Joey Lenny. In for his third punt of the afternoon. High, not particularly deep, but the very effective as it uh, takes a Permian bounce down inside the 30. That's a very good punt for going into that win, Bert. And the center chance will mark down the 33-yard punt at the Amarillo 22-yard line. Last time the Sandys had the ball in the second half, or rather in the first half, they moved from their 20 all the way down to the Permian 25 from where Greaser hit a 42-yard field goal. And now the quarterback, Brett Leathers, brings the offense back on the field, hoping to do the same once again. In the backfield with him, Chad Reagan, number 30. And this is Reagan on the carry as Reagan will move all the way out to the 34-yard line for a gain of uh, a little bit more than seven. Let's call it eight. 
Keltron, Montgomery, and uh, Aaron Washington teamed up to make the stop. What uh, what happened then is the running back went to the was going to just slide off of left tackle. Saw that hole close up, so he went around the end and uh, found it wide open until he got into the secondary. Reagan back there with uh, Jason Harris, who has gotten a lot of playing time today with the tender ankle of T.J. Jones, the normal tailback, and Reagan right up the gut from where Pinkstaff makes the tackle. But uh, all the way out to the Amarillo 43-yard line, a 13-yard pickup for Reagan. This is rather reminiscent of the very first drive that the uh, Sandys did. Uh, they were total control of Permian's uh, defense, and it seems to be happening right now again. Correction, I said 13. The game was 8 out to the 43-yard line, and uh, this will be the tailback. And uh, absolutely nothing. As for Permian, uh, Cooney, number 38, up to make the tackle. The one that really stacked it up, though, was Jimmy Wharton. He was in, had a hold of him by one hand. I mean, they were like holding hands, and Wharton <laughs> holding him back uh, long enough to bring up the help. Well, in fact, uh, he lost one, make it second and 11 after the loss of one. Permian infants, uh, interior lineman Waters and Wharton, 88-72. Pinkstaff, 27, and Jensen, 56. At the ends, Hamilton, Garrett, and Cooney at the linebackers with Washington and Bass at the corners, Brito and Montgomery at the safeties. Waters really playing a great game so far this afternoon because he was blocked down on the ground with his blocker on top of him, and he reached up with a hand and made the tackle. And again, the gain, absolutely not a third and 11 now for Amarillo. 7-19 and ticking to play in the third quarter. 21-10, our score letters to pass. And uh, from out of the backfield, he has Jason Harris. Harris takes it all the way down inside Permian territory. Not necessarily a design play, Barry, it looked like, because Leathers was forced out of the pocket. He goes to the right, and a very good and quick thinking back, Jason Harris, made the move to the outside, moving with him, and was opened and opened uh, himself up for the pass. 15 yards for the Harris uh, pass completion. Harris had not thought of pass coming into play today, and has caught two, caught the first pass of the day, and that one from uh, quarterback Leathers. Here is Reagan. <laughs> Permian territory inside the 10. They mark him out right at the 10-yard line. A 33-yard gain. Second biggest running play against the Permian defense this year. They had a 49-yarder given up to Gerald Watson of Temple last week. And now Reagan takes it 33 yards down to the Permian 10-yard line. And uh, some blocking scheme changes at halftime. Uh, and found some holes for that Amarillo offense to run through. Plus some missed tackles. Two, two penetration in the backfield and missed both of them. Reagan over 80 yards on the afternoon. Here again is Jason Harris, number 41, and our view is suddenly going to be blocked by all of the well, Amarillo right. faithful that are jumping up to see what's going on. Very strong tackle by Garrett, number 85, uh, but uh, still crossed the line of scrimmage. Uh, Garrett had to go over blockers to make the tackle. Now they're going to Mark, if any gain, it's going to be about a half a yard. They're going to mark him inside the nine-yard line, inside the ten, rather, at the nine. Leathers, back to pass. He's going to float it up. Touchdown! He threw a lot. He just kind of, Leathers just kind of threw it in the air, waiting for his receiver to run under the ball, and it definitely happened. He came under him, and that was Harrison who ran under the ball. It was a beautiful play. And Robbie Harrison with his third touchdown of the season. Got a couple of them last week. Six for 121 coming in. That's a 20-yard average, and this one a nine-yard pass and run. Actually, a nine-yard pass floater into the back of the end zone where Robbie Harrison grabs onto it, and now Amarillo, much like the beginning of the game, takes their opening drive in the third quarter and methodically moves down the field. And they're going for two, Barry. Incomplete pass, and as they attended uh, the pass to go in there, it looked like it was intended for number 30, uh, Ray, Chad Reagan, and 
Uh, it was broken up very well by Permian at that time. They just tried to get that extra two points to take advantage uh, of that uh, uh, three-point, of course, field goal they got earlier in the in the game. Score now 21 for the Panthers, 16 for the Sandys. Bert. A two minute and 51 second drive for Amarillo moves in the 78 yards in nine plays. Much like that 82 yard drive to open the uh, ball game this afternoon in Amarillo. Nine yard pass play to uh, Robbie Harrison from quarterback Brent Leathers. Leathers fifth of the year. Harrison's third reception for a TD on the season. And uh, Amarillo has narrowed the, narrowed the gap to 21-16. As we were talking at halftime, uh, the way that this game has kind of been a, a little ragged on both sides, you might say, uh, there's no way to tell what the outcome might be or any trends being set or what you can look for uh, that might be working for one team or the other. It's bounced back and forth so much uh, as we move through the uh, first half of play and into the third quarter. Uh, there's not much trend that you can trace. Uh, Amarillo uh, lost to Pampa last year, last week, rather, 21 to 20. Had uh, 311 yards of offense, gave up 378 and 180 of it to the running back, Matt Garvin. Well, the offense looked a lot different today, I tell you. They've come to play, and the defense, uh, you know, has done a good job against Permian. It's just that uh, the good play by the Permian defense has given the offense a short field to work with twice in the first half on interceptions by Brito and, and Bass, the uh, good punt return by Bass. Other than that, the Amarillo defense has played uh, very stout this afternoon. They definitely have, and another thing that's helping the Sandys are to keep Permian deep, and what's doing that on these kickoffs uh, is that young kicker for the uh, Sandys, as he put it through the field goal uh, <laughs> the, that time, and uh, Panthers start again at the 20-yard line. Oh boy, that brought the, the faithful on their feet. 6-19 to play. We're in the third quarter from, from as uh, the OA beat rider told us, slick Bivens Stadium as the turf is very slick this afternoon. Dick Bivens Stadium in Amarillo in the fall afternoon here in the Panhandle. And Permian, after uh, jumping out to a 21-0, falling behind early 7-0, then jumping out 21-7, now has given up 10 consecutive points to Amarillo, as Amarillo, rather, uh, has given up uh, 9 consecutive points as Amarillo now has closed within 21-16. That play, you see Williams going around the left side, trying to cut in, no place again, uh, defense stringing it out, but what Williams did there to gain about three extra yards was he headed around, but it's going to be brought back, I see, but anyway, he headed around and stopped before he was heading out of bounds, cut back up into the field, gained an additional three, but that's being marked up because of a flag on the play. Uh, it looks like illegal uh, illegal procedure. A uh, motion, in the back motion in the backfield for the against the Panthers. Now, Permian shoot themselves in the foot as they begin the second half now. The first uh, First drive of the second half, Permian started at the 20, moved out to the 41, had to punt. And uh, now this series started at the 20, and the penalty has moved him back to the 15. It'll be first and 15, and here comes Williams. And uh, eight yards for John Williams out to the 23-yard line as he gets back uh, the five loss plus three more, and Permian now facing a second and seven. It's amazing uh, the strategy here, and I'm sure it's because they're going against that win, but uh, Williams, I think, uh, as you all have said, has uh, carried that ball almost every time, but uh, he is so strong, as he showed right there. He gets to the line, gets some arms around him, he'll break them for another three yards, and that makes a big difference. Uh, 24 carries for John Williams on the afternoon for 133 yards, and it's been some, been some tough going, as that defense is really sticking it to him. Permian now back to pass, and Keaton... Taz Bass, and tipping number 21 quickly makes the tackle before uh, Sheldon can get much more than just a couple of yards. It's going to be a minimal gain of maybe. Well, this, uh, this down started at the 23. They're going to mark it at the 27, 26-yard line, a gain of three. Well, tipping was playing that one a lot tighter than they have most uh, of the second and third, I mean, of this period and uh, was able to make the stop quicker on that. Yeah, those defensive backs have watched the film is because Sheldon's first move is usually the opposite way as he tries to do what he can to get the extra yard. It sure is Williams. All the way up to the 43-yard line of Amarillo from the 26 to the 43. That's 17 yards. 
What can you say? You run out of superlatives to say about Williams. The way he does his running, he works, he twists back and forth, he shakes people. Uh, the only way they brought him down there was uh, the attack. The uh, defensive man had a hold of his uh, shoulder pads and was able to hang on for dear life and twist him down. That Williams is a tough, strong runner. Uh, Keith, the uh, Raglan, our statistician, says officially 16. They're going to mark it instead of at the 43 at the uh, Permian 42-yard line. And uh, Permian will burn their second timeout of the second half with 4.24 to play in the third quarter. It is Permian 21, Amarillo 16, as Permian has moved out to their 42-yard line. Uh, Rick Amarillo came to play this afternoon. They showed that. They showed that uh, they felt uh, they beat them uh, square, fair and square. Uh, they played when they played them last year in the playoffs. Uh, they just want to prove that again, and uh, they've really toughened up since uh, the second quarter. I'll guarantee that. Now, one of the quotes that I had, uh, had seen after the 10-7 victory in Lubbock last year was that Amarillo rocked Permian's world with that victory in the playoffs. Permian didn't uh, take too kindly to that uh, quote, and uh, I'm sure that has been discussed at, uh, at least... Uh, a little bit this week. Here is Williams. <laughs> he, can, he can gain five yards running backwards in his sleep, I do believe. I told you, that's, that's of course, he was hit off hard out there by Sandy, too, from behind, which helped have gained two or three more yards. But, uh, again, uh, Williams is very tough at that. But when he is hit, he turns his back to it and uses his uh, push power, I guess, instead of his pull power to gain uh, some more yards. Now from the 42 to the 46. That's 8-4, the 12-yard gain for John Williams. Meets Permian again with a first down at the 46-yard line. He had about 10 and then stepped backwards for the final yardage. Again, here's Williams with a peak staff leading the blocking. And the defense up there quickly as they're swarming the, the, uh, the front eight. The eight-man front up against Williams, knowing that uh, Permian with that set is going to be running the big tailback or the big pullback toward him. Gain is going to be six up to the 40-yard line in Permian, rather gain of five up to the 41, and up Permian with a second and five. Seems like uh, they can start keying on Williams at this time, since he's uh, the only one carrying the ball. But uh, on that run, Williams was hit three yards back from where the ball was placed at the 41, and uh, was able to just slice forward, pick up that extra two yards. It was about this point last week that uh, suddenly Permian started going to pink staff from his tailback position because of the king of the Temple defense on Williams. We may look at that happening here in just a moment. Williams slicing up beyond, uh, up inside Amarillo territory, inside the 40. They mark it at the 42-yard line. I'm sorry, they mark it at the 38, 37-yard uh, line. That's right. Williams, again, as it just seems like they're just going to try and grind out the ball right now in this period with it uh, being against the wind. Try and pick up those first downs and get that score. Here comes Williams again for that first down. Big, important first down, too, as they move deeper. Nine yards for John Williams up to the 28-yard line, and he seems to just get stronger as the game wears on at uh, punishment earlier. Up to 178 yards and uh, four Williams, 29 carries this afternoon. He had 30 last week against Temple. His uh, career high is 35 against San Angelo Central last year. He had a 35-carry game. Uh, also scored five TDs in that ball game. 29 carries this afternoon. Williams with the three Permian touchdown scores, all of them on short runs. Two one-yarders and one two-yarder. Finally caught up by uh, Jeff Robinson for the Sandys. Uh, it seems like very, uh, I guess this is one reason that uh, it's it's a game of for the young people. And just as many times as Williams has carried that ball. I mean, you and I couldn't walk on the field and off that many times. Other I mean, uh, then, then run with the ball that many times. Let me tell you a story about Williams after this play. 24-yard line for Permian after the gain of five. It'll be second and five for the Permian offense as they're trying to chew down the clock here in the third quarter. A minute 43 left to play. And uh, as Williams tries the center of the line, does the stutter step, and it doesn't work as the defense quickly comes up to collapse on him. It looks like Bayer, number 52, with the bear hug, along with number 57, Tyler Cox. And Permian now facing a third down. On this drive that started back at their 20-yard line, the penalty moved it back to the 15. This drive better than five minutes old and running. Permian with a third down, they must reach inside the Sandy 19-yard line. 
And that extra effort just may give it to him unless the official marks it back in the 20, which he will do. He's saying that Williams' knee hit right at about the 20-yard line. That's going to leave Permian about a yard short. I, I doubt seriously there'll be another thought other than to go for it with only about a yard. I may be mistaken, but uh, it just seems like the way they've been moving that ball on the ground, this would be a grand opportunity to just go ahead and keep trying it. Uh, again, Williams uh, needing uh, a little rest. It seemed like uh, he was hit awful quick uh, on that play, but had that second effort. Well, I don't think that you have to look for the quarterback sneak. All of these people are going to be standing up, so Rick and me and Keith are going to have to do the same thing. Here is John Williams. And, ah, it's uh, going to be close, Barry. It looks like he's a good half an hour past the marker. I think you're right. I think he got it just by the sheer force of the front uh, offensive line who uh, really surged ahead on that. And then with him right behind him trying to gain and working his, it is first down. Again, Williams picks it up. Was that his 33rd carry? 33, right? 33 for 189 yards. The Permian school record for carries in a single ball game. It's 35, that's held jointly by Williams. The 12th play of the drive of the series, 12th play of the drive that began back at the Permian 20. Told you a moment ago the penalty moved it back to the 15. Permian took over at that point with 6.19 to play in the third quarter after Amarillo had driven 78 yards in nine plays, culminating with a nine yard letters to uh, Harrison Pass. And now the Permian offense and John Williams have taken matters into their own hands. 33 carries for the senior fullback on this afternoon with 189 yards unofficially. Permian with a first and 10 now from the Amarillo 18-yard line. Here is John Williams. And here He's is good. Williams. He's in there. Williams will cross touchdown. the goal line for the Permian touchdown from 18 yards out. Two men had hands on him, had him stopped. Williams breaks the tackle, and then it's wide open field because everybody else let down. It looked like a sure tackle. I don't know what happened if, if uh, he just broke loose. Uh, somebody gave up there, I guarantee. All the way in for the touchdown. Big touchdown for Permian, the way Sandys were moving that ball. Six minutes and 25 seconds on the series for Permian, and John Williams has now topped the 200-yard mark for the second consecutive week. Coming into the game this afternoon, Rick, John Williams needed 211 yards to tie the all-time Permian record for rushing in a career. That uh, is held by Sean Crow, 20, right. 37.55. Chris Comer had 37.24. Williams, 35.44 for coming in. And uh, got to, got to, complete. That's complete to J.C. JC Kidd. The two-point conversion to Kidd. And Permian now goes on top by a count of 29 to 16 after the 18, after the, uh, the 12 play. Well, what happened there was 85-yard drive. You're right. Kidd went to the outside, stopped, turned around, curled in, and came back in as... Uh, uh, Keaton was heading to the right side of the field looking for a receiver and JC did the right thing curled it back in and was open at the back of the end zone for those two points okay Williams with 207 this afternoon and 35 44 coming in that's going to give him 37 uh, 37 51 so he has surpassed Chris Comer's a number two on the all-time rushing list and is four yards from tying the all-time mark of Sean Crow Five from breaking a record that is hit that uh, Crow set uh, back in the 85, 86, 87 season. Also, Williams this afternoon has uh, carried 34 times for that 207 yards. The record is 35 carries in the game. Williams last year against San Angelo, Chris Comer against Dallas Carter in '88, and Houston Aldean in 1989. There goes one out of the end zone from the Panthers. So that means the Sandys will start from their own 20. And uh, this is something that the Panthers have definitely been used to, Barry. Now John Williams with a record-setting afternoon this afternoon. Also the 200 yards rushing by John in his illustrious career. Williams has topped the 200-yard mark for the fifth time in his career. He's gone over the 100 mark now 16 times. I'll tell you, that's quite a running back. 3,500-something yards, about to break a 
or rather 30, is that right, 3,700 something yards, about to break uh, uh, the mark held by Sean Crow, probably the most prolific quarterback, or rather running back in Permian history. Amazing, amazing. That The front defense, uh, defensive line for the Permian is just doing a great job here. Again, Waylon Waters on the ground, a, a, a tackler, I mean a, a tackler, it looked like he was tackled. A blocker was laying on top of him and he raises up with one hand, causes the uh, runner to stumble. Now with the Permian lead now at 13 points, 29-16, the defense must dig in quickly. Here is Leathers back to quit, back quickly to pass. And uh, they say it's good. Nice catch. Chad Reagan with a quick grab. He kind of batted it up in the air, kept his concentration. And a flat on his back was able to definitely to uh, keep the ball above the ground for a uh, you know, a short three-yard gain. Just kind of topped up in the air and uh, kept his concentration, just like you said, long enough to catch that ball in a diving catch. That was a real pretty catch. It's going to be third and five for Amarillo. They started on the 20 after the... Uh, uh, Stevenson kick went through the end zone. They are now at the 25-yard line, actually the 24. And uh, here again is Reagan. And the Permian defense up quickly, and he will fall far short, about three yards short of a first down, and Amarillo moving into the stiff breeze will apparently have to turn the ball over as Sheldon Bass, number 18, was up quickly to wreak havoc on the offense, and here comes the punting team. Sheldon Bass was the man that stopped everything. He slowed it up, and then the troops came in, so... Let me ask you something. Leathers is the putter. Leathers is the quarterback. Could uh, it be? Would, would you fake something? Could it be? At this point in the game, we have, and we have a lot of folks between us and the clock, 10-13, to play in the third quarter. Do you punt it? Do you fake it? I, I, I would think Permian better keep their eyes and ears open, but no, nope, not going to happen this time. Keaton from the 50-yard line and uh, down to the Amarillo 47 as once again the wind and the defense uh, set Permian up, Permian up in fine fashion at the uh, Amarillo 47-yard line. Let me ask you a question, Barry. Uh, do you think with a wind to your back, you're leaning 29 to 16, uh, are you going to see Williams run? Sure. Okay. Just well, I, I, I think, Rick, I, <laughs> that, of that course, you know, tongue-in-cheek. Right? Okay, we're not coaches, but I would think, you know, with a 13-point lead, you've got a running back of Williams' capability. Uh, he very conceivably could break. The uh, rushing record of Sean Crow on this carry, he needed 211 to tie, 212 to break, and he has once again 207. This could be the record-breaking run unofficially by Williams. Uh-oh, but it's instead, instead it's a Guess fake. What? And here is Keltron Montgomery. Keltron Montgomery with his initial run of the day. You think they've been setting that up, all those other plays, Barry, by giving it to Williams and then saying, okay, here it is. Nope, it didn't. Now, Williams, one carry for five yards coming into the game. He carries this one all the way from the Amarillo 47 down to the 19-yard line. At the, what, 28 yards? It had to, it had to happen. It just had to happen. I mean, <laughs> you've been giving it to one man all day, and then, all, and then they get to expect in that because you haven't made anything different. Here he is. You know, the defensive tackle, I got him. I yeah, got him. Yeah. He still have the ball. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We're, well, we, what we told you just a moment ago. Once again, this could be the record-breaking record run by Williams. Again, uh, this will be his 35th carry. <laughs> Not this time. <laughs> it won't be that time as he has stopped uh, for no gain on the Amarillo 19-yard line. Well, Michael Wood was waiting for him there, and either way, uh, no matter what Williams did at that time, Michael wasn't going to leave, and he held his position, and uh, so Williams didn't have much choice but to try and run into him, and uh, it didn't do any good. Wood brought him down. Well, it looks like they're going to be, a uh, matter of fact, a loss of one back to the 20-yard line. Williams five yards short, and uh, that was his 35th carry. The next carry will break the a single carries and again rather carries in a single game of 35. This will be his 36th carry and for John Williams also the record break. Oh, oh, oh! As Williams almost took it the entire distance all the way down to the six yard line it is a gain of 14. And John Williams is the new record holder for career rushing yardage at Odessa Permian High School a school that first began play back in 1959 and on the 36th carry Williams now with 219 yards in his second consecutive 200-yard day. And, you know, you just run out of yeah, what can you say? You, you run out early on this young man. Uh, he's, he's, he's some of the best I've seen. Williams uh, is tied with others with five touchdowns in a single game. 
If he pushes this one across, it will be a five TD game for Williams. He's about a yard short on that one. Uh, it sure looked like he had it, but he, he, he went into the air. And when you do that, of course, you lose your motors, uh, those feet moving, and uh, they were able, when they hit him, just to push him back. Uh, Williams and Comer. Comer against Odessa High in 1989. Williams last year against San Angelo. Both time, uh, both games, uh, they were able to score five rushing TDs in the game. Williams now with four. A couple of one-yard runs, a two-yard run, an 18-yard run a moment ago. And if he can wiggle into the end zone here, it'll be... Touchdown! Touchdown! Right over the middle. John Williams fifth, rushing a touchdown of the day. Puts Permian on top. 35-16, to 16, 38 carries, 225 yards for John Williams, who in his career... Uh, 3,769 yards. I'll tell you, that's a lot of work. The young man has really put in his day's work today so far, and there's still eight minutes left in the uh, game. Uh, Williams still probably going to be in there playing. That's the type of player he is, unless the coach says, okay, let's rest him a while. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's in good shape, and uh, Williams, you've done uh, a great job today, so your pay for that is to rest. But we're going for two on this one. No good. Pass was intended there for number 27, Pink Staff, and it was just a little, it was thrown a little behind and a little high, but it was also a very hard thrown ball by uh, Keaton, and Pink Staff just was not able to go for it. The, extra two, the two extra points, no good. Well, the 47-yard drive in five plays forced a big run by Williams to set up the touchdown run. A minute 55 used off of the clock, and... Let's give that uh, touchdown to the defense for stopping the Amarillo offense and also not only to Williams, but that offensive line that's done such a great job this afternoon. You know, as always, Rick outweigh tremendously, but always. they find a way to make it work. Burmis and Kane and Chance, Jensen, Couch, Garrett, also Waters and Rory Couch have also been in there this afternoon. And, and um, I don't know how they do it, Barry. Another week great day in the week. office. Week after week, they've got men 250, 280. I think we had a 300 and something man <laughs> against them. And, uh, and you're 270 last week. 270, and you're talking about guys across from them at 168, 198, you know, 178, uh, and, uh, and, and Burmis, they just take care of it. The, the, the heavy guy on the line is the center chance at 204. Burmis goes 200, Couch and Jensen 190, 190. They're looking at 168 here. Yeah, Jamie Kane 168. I mean, he's, he's going up against Williams that's and right. Gardner. That combined is 200 or 478 pounds of beef. Yeah, where's the beef, right? I mean, those guys needed the stockyards for dinner probably, and the cow didn't fill them up. Oh, they're coming out with it. Blunt gathers in the kickoff, and uh, he could have done the same thing by taking the knee as Amarillo will start this one at the 20 yard line. Big, big number 45, Eric Williams down quick to make the stop on the, for the Panthers. And uh, yes, at the 20 yard line, maybe just short of the 20, the Sandys take over. Yeah, you know, a record setting day at Dick Bibbon Stadium in Amarillo for John Williams. Uh, tying an all time rushing record with five TDs in the game, setting the all time uh, career yardage rushing record, setting the all time uh, carries in a single game record. Um, it's been the John Williams show this afternoon as the passing game really hadn't clicked. This will be Reagan as uh, Amarillo starts from the 19 instead of the 20, as I said a moment ago. Adam Hamilton really making the hit to knock him out of bounds, but they're trying to go around that corner. There, that's a quick running back. Quick running back was able to turn the corner. It looks like about what, uh, maybe five, six yard gain on that. Yeah, inside of seven minutes and 50 seconds to play in this one is Permian. After uh, falling behind early, seven nothing took a 21 to seven lead. Halftime score 21 10 before Amarillo closed the gap to 21 16. And uh, then Permian with two quick scores to bring us to our 35 to 16 margin. This again is Reagan, who is getting close to 100 himself. He had a 100 yard day two weeks ago against Clovis, New Mexico. Kind of kept in check last week. But uh, nearing 100 at uh, unofficially 93 now for Chad Reagan, the senior fullback. Amarillo with a third down for the 27 yard line. Third and oh, three. down on his knee and shooting through there was number 85, Alan Garrett. 
And also there to help in number 72, you see quickly Jimmy Horton coming up off the pile. Ford and Waters and Jensen and Pinkstaff, Hamilton, Garrett Cooney, Bass, Montgomery, Rachel and Washington. They've been tested this afternoon, but uh, they've come through when they had to and help the offense make the game what it is at 35-16. Defense has played a very good game. A very good game. Heads up ball all the way. Here comes the punt. Attempt by Leathers. Leathers standing back at his 15. And uh, Montgomery and uh, Bass back inside the Permian 45 as Amarillo chooses to take a timeout. 35-16 Permian with 640 to play in the fourth quarter. Thirty-five, sixteen. Again, our score is uh, Leathers standing back inside his 15. We'll get this punt away. Permian should come away with good field position. Rick, after uh, after Keaton gathered in the punt a moment ago, you notice he's not back on the punt return team. I think the coach is, uh-uh, that's okay. Let's put the other two guys back. I don't want my quarterback returning the punt this time. Back. That makes sense. Makes sense. No, they that win kick up, though. It's a big forward. This will be in the direction of Montgomery, but uh, down quickly for the Sandys will be number 50, Larry, rather James Larry, to uh, gather in the very short 23-yard punt. And it, uh, in fact, is three yards further than the 20-yard punt that, uh, that Leathers got off a moment ago. The Permian, once again, will start from inside Amarillo territory at the 49-yard line. Well, the punt was high. And with the wind, I felt that gust right at the right at the time that that punt reached uh, the height, uh, and uh, you could just see it. The ball just stopped dead in the air and just came straight down. So the wind definitely playing a part here. The starting Permian offense of Williams and Pinkstaff in behind Keaton, and here is Williams who will pass. He's looking. He has a man wide open. <laughs> oh, what a catch! And then Sheldon Bass. What a catch! Sheldon Bass runs up for the runs under the floating duck. Able to gather it in at the Permian five at the Amarillo five yard line. Oh, we got a we got a penalty back there. Oh, a 44 yard uh, uh, pass, catch, and run is negated by penalty. They're gonna move them back. <laughs> that illegal. I, I couldn't tell what the call was yet. Uh, they'll give it to us in just a moment. I tell you, that was so fun. It looked pass all the way. All he was trying to do, Rick, was 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 get his hands around on the. Uh, on the laces of the football so we could float it down there to him and, and Bass was so wide open well they nobody, had the defense suckered in and nobody was thinking pass. Nobody expected that whatsoever. It's a great pass. It was a great catch by Bass. So, you know, all the way. Ellen, the passing department, uh, not a good one today. Four or ten for 24 yards. A stiff breeze combined with uh, just a little bit off the of mark in some cases by, uh, by Keaton. Uh, some drop passes by the receiving core and other opportunities. Uh, but the running game has been there mainly for John Williams. And here he Williams is again. Almost every carry, Kel Kel from Montgomery had one big. There he is again. Can't stop the man. That's all there is to it. He's too much. He's got it going for him today. He'll continue to set those records. There's a 20-yard run by Williams all the way down to the 34-yard line of Amarillo. See what he's up to. He's up to 245. 245 yards this game. There he comes out. John Williams will be trotting off the field. This is John Williams' best day as a Permian running back. He had a high of 230 yards in a game last year, 1992. 230. Today, unofficially, John Williams, 245 yards. There goes another Williams. Here is Eric Williams, number 45. Look at this. Williams, look at this. Look at this. Punishing those defensive backs all the way down inside the Amarillo 25-yard line. He says, my name's Williams, too, Barry. He said, watch. Watch my trail dust. 13 yards for Eric Williams, his first carry of the year, I believe. That's right, first carry for Eric Williams this season. All the way down to the 21-yard line, and the wind is really beginning yeah, to pick up. really whirling around. In a quarterback now for uh, Permian, of course, is Mike Nichols. And uh, don't you know this crew that's in there right now really wants to go across that goal line as well as anything? 
No, you can't really stick the guys in there and say, okay, sit on it. Yeah, exactly. You know, this, yeah. Isn't, this isn't Fonzie. It's not a happy day. So let's go ahead and try to get the ball to the end zone. Let's check and see who else. Marquise Ross, number 17, and in the tailback position with Eric Williams. Also in there at uh, wingback is number 42, Gus Quesada. And uh, J.C. Kidd split out wide left. Yeah, we're getting some congratulations from the Amarillo faithful just shaking his head and saying, what a ball club, what a ball club. The quarterback that time was Lucas Molina leading that that crew out there on the field. And uh, what, when I mean leading, uh, that's what happens when they hand that ball off. He's leading the, uh, the, uh, the running backs into the hole, blocking ahead of the, the runners and uh, carrying out his assigned task. Four thirty-two left in this game, Barry. And Permian, the quarterback Molina, rolling left. It's going to be a carry all the way by the quarterback. This is instead Mike Nichols. Nichols, a little razzle dazzle, but uh, pushed rudely to the turf to the eighteen-yard line with a loss of two. Looks like we're going to have a field goal try, Barry, from, uh, seems to be about the 24-yard line. So in for the field goal attempt will be uh, Eric Stevenson, number 13, at a 37-yarder against El Paso Coronado. Misfire the next two opportunities. Stevenson will try this from the 24, make it a 34-yard attempt, and... Run wide right. Under and wide right as the field goal attempt goes awry, but Permian, 3.36 to play, has the 35-16 to 16 lead. And Rick, final tune-up before district. District Wars begin next week against Odessa High. What do you think about what you've seen this afternoon? Well, what I've seen is uh, I was a little concerned when the game first started. Uh, in the first period, of course, uh, Permian looked a, a little lackadaisical, a little ragged. Uh, didn't seem to be as focused as uh, they really wanted to be, I'm sure and uh, the Sandys really moved them all over. Then all of a sudden it seemed like the button went on and uh, they said uh, we're ready to play some football. And since then they've been pretty much that way. I think uh, they're going to be very strong in the district race, needless to say. And uh, there's the passing game continues for the Sandys. Uh, Leathers quickly finds Jesco for the pass completion. We're at 3.30 and counting as Amarillo now moves uh, the chains. From the 20 all the way out to the 42-yard line after the 22-yard pass play to the way back Scott Jesko is many of the defenders. Couch among them, Eric Williams among them, 9 of 14, 127 yards now for Brent Leathers. Fermian second team defense in there will try to catch some of the numbers for you. Intended for Brandon Loper, the tight end. That was wide open too, Lopers was out there on uh, the coverage. Uh, coming up on him uh, rather quick when he saw which direction the ball was going was Rory Couch, but uh, the, the receiver was there. Uh, again, the wind's got to be playing havoc with the ball out there, whether you're kicking it or throwing it. Bouchon Bergen, the middle linebacker, along with Cooney, number 38, and uh, Couch, number 60. At uh, Over here on the far left wing, we have number 24, C.C. Harris, at cornerback, and uh, Reagan makes the catch, kind of bobbles it, but comes up with it, and Amarillo moves inside Permian territory all the way down to the 44-yard line. Beautiful catch because I didn't think he was going to get it for a while, but he carries it in front of him. That's a very focused young man because he kept his eyes on it, kept his mind on what his business was, and picked up that ball and carried it on, and plus made that tackler definitely know that uh, who he was when he got hit. Now Leathers, 10 of 16, 140 yards this afternoon, 3.15. And uh, the clock will start with a snap of the ball. Leathers back once again to pass. There comes the pressure. Oh, there it is. And Eric Williams in there quickly to make the tackle as he beats the uh, offensive line to Mac Adams to the punch. Pushed Adams completely back into the quarterback. Also in there defensively for Permian, uh, Chad Flora, number 69. Uh, let's see who else is on the offensive or rather defensive front. Uh, number 76, Eric Heatla in there defensively for Permian. Tommy Jones split out to this side for the, the uh, Panthers. And, and the pass is coming in the direction of Jones. No, he looks back the other way. Jump by Doss. Finds his, uh, ooh, nice. His man out of the backfield before Bouchon Bergen puts the hit on Jason Harris. 2.30 and counting. 
and Amarillo decides to take a timeout. Permian with the lead at 35 to 16. Well, at this point, Rick, it's all a matter of saying, well, we scored X number of points against Permian because I believe the uh, the game is no longer in doubt at 35-16. Now with 2.31 left, uh, they would take a monstrous uh, set of scoring uh, situations, and I just don't think that's going to be made available by the Panthers. We've got some new players in there. One of them, uh, I believe it is uh, Eric Mostenbacher. He's in uh, to play. <laughs> is that, was that close? That's close. Mustenbacher, number 82. That's what I said. And also, uh, Marquista Ross, 17 back. Who's playing safety back here with Ross? Let's double check the number. That is uh, Kevin Hubbard, number 10. Right. And uh, number 23, Mike Nichols, will be on the far corner. As you mentioned a moment ago, number 28, Tommy Jones on this side. Linebackers are Bergen in the middle. Uh, flanked by now, number 35, Ryan Williams. And uh, number 82, Mutson Bucker and the defensive uh, men down front. Let's check all the numbers right quick. Number 69, Chad Flora is in there. Penalty marked off against the uh, Sandys for uh, motion, I'm sure, in that line. Heatla in there on the defensive uh, front. Uh, Williams we mentioned a moment ago. And uh, also Frank Sotelo, number 29, Permian. 35 points off of the uh, 316 yards of total offense, of which uh, John Williams, 245 of it. A little bit of contact, but no flag, as the pass was intended for Robbie Harrison, 225 and counting. And Zamarillo now will face a fourth and 11 from the 45-yard uh, line. Mike Nichols doing a good job of covering the downfield uh, receiver that time. Uh, the pass was thrown hard and just a little bit ahead. And I would just about uh, guarantee he's gonna dial that number once again. Harrison, his favorite receiver coming into the game. And uh, of course, he's shown a, a tendency to, to, to drop it off to the running back if he gets an opportunity, specifically Jason Harris, who's had a good game receiving this afternoon, number 41. Here is Jessica in motion as Leathers will roll to his right. He's looking, here's the pressure. And oh. uh, almost intercepted by C.C. Harris as uh, the quarterback Leathers was really tattooed there by Bouchon Bergen. He, he, could, you. he had a head of steam going. There was no way he was going to put the brakes on that one, Bergen. Two minutes and 18 seconds to play as Permian's defense. Second team defense arises to the occasion and the ball goes over on downs. Permian will start this series from their own 45 yard line. And we're going to total of Amarillo's total yards for you. This is all unofficial. It's what you see in the Sunday morning paper will be the official yardage. Williams, as we told you, 245 yards rushing. Sets a new record, a personal best, 39 carries. That's a new record. Ties the record of five rushing TDs. And Williams, 37.89 in career rushing yardage with a new mark to top the mark set by Sean Crow back in 1985, 86, 87. Molina, the quarterback, this, this session of downs, uh, Brian Ratliff, the ball carrier, going over the left side, uh, picks up about three yards on the play. Uh, the Panther uh, defense has been tested this afternoon. 249 yards is what they've given up to the Sandys. And the clock now ticking inside at two minutes at 151 in the backfield. Ratliff. And on this carry, number 24, C.C. Harris. Must be the old Elvis on C.C. Ryder. Right. What you're seeing now, though, is, a, is another crew of young men that uh, definitely want to show everybody they've got the ability to, uh, some of them young, sophomores and uh, juniors, that they've got the ability to carry the tradition on for the Panthers. Yeah, let's check who else is coming in. Uh, John Alvarado, we see number 58, along with number 69, Chad Flora. Flora playing defense and offense. 113, 112, 111. And uh, too much time taken by the Permian offense. Harris in the backfield, number 24 at fullback, is uh, Ryan Ratliff, number 32. Molina, the quarterback. Split wide right, Tommy Jones, number 28. And uh, splitting out wide left was number 12, Jeremy Rutledge. So we can check the, uh, the ulterior. There was the interior lineman right quick, number 76, is your buddy, Heatla. 5'10", 196 pound senior. 
Laurel we mentioned a moment ago, the center, number 54, Stephen Perillo. He's a sophomore, 230, six foot three. Two sophomores on this team, Cast the other, and uh, maybe a couple more coming up this week from the junior varsity. Here's Ratliff. And then Ratliff up to the 50-yard line. Nice hole opened up on that left side for Ratliff, though. Uh, that's the kind of hole you like to get at that time where you're going to pick up those two to five-yard runs. If you get lucky on those kind of holes uh, and you break through the, the, the linebacking core and the secondary, of course, you get the big runs. But it's